Ha 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 family. Back with another episode about ghosts on boats, ships. Some very interesting stories, I think. Um, if you've been liking the episodes, like it, subscribe. When we finally reach a thousand subscribers, we're going to be doing a really awesome giveaway featuring, featuring merchandise from the Honda Family Podcast merch shop that we're building and the my co-host's Etsy shop, Cat Hair Glitter. So you will want to be part of that giveaway. If you have a true paranormal story that you think I might be interested in hearing, that our listeners might be interested in hearing, send me an email at hauntedfamilypodcast at gmail.com and it might be on the, another episode. Sit back and enjoy the show. When I was about 10, my parents took my brother and I to Baltimore Harbor to tour the 18th century warship, the Constellation. We walked throughout the ship, topside and below deck, seeing just about everything there. It was near closing time for tours when my brother and I heard my parents calling for us to come back upstairs. We were below deck checking out the cannons. When we went upstairs to our parents, I asked them if my brother and I could go back downstairs one more time before we leave. And of course, they said we could. While downstairs, my brother was walking over to the left side of the ship. I was looking at a cannon on the right side of the ship. I looked at the cannon the furthest away from me about 20 feet or so, when I noticed a young sailor dressed in black pants, a white striped shirt, a round black hat with a tassel at the back, standing beside the cannon holding a long, tall wooden pole. I called back to my brother to come see, which he did. I remember saying to the sailor that he sure had a nice ship. As we stood there looking, he, the sailor, turned his gaze from the direction that the cannon was pointed and looked right at us. I will never forget the look in his eyes as he stared at us. He did not speak at all, then turned his gaze back towards the cannon, looking out through the gun's porthole. We went back upstairs to tell our parents about the sailor that we had just seen below deck. While I was telling our parents about it, one of the people taking care of the ship came up to us and said that we would have to leave. The ship was now closed. I told this person about the sailor downstairs. Had, and that he had really made the whole tour come to life for us. And he was surprised and told us that there was no one else below deck and that they had no one dressed as a sailor working the ship that day. I have recently went back to the ship again, although I did not see the sailor on this visit. Although, standing in the same spot that the sailor had been, looking at the cannon, I began to feel cold chills and the hair standing on the back of my neck. I've been trying to find a description of my experience aboard the Queen Mary, but so far I've been unable to do so. This happened about five years ago, when my husband and I were on one of the -the behind-the-scene tours, or ghost tours, specifically designed to point out the sites of the many paranormal experiences reported by passengers, crews, and visitors. Throughout most of the tour, which had seemed a bit stagey or theatrical to me, I was interested, but felt no strong presence of anything unusual. This changed dramatically in two spots. The engine room spaces and the pool room. I definitely felt the presence of the men described by our tour guide and by several other accounts that I have read about on the internet. It was my experience in the pool area that remains quite unique. My husband and I were the last two to enter this area, due primarily to my reluctance. As soon as the tour guide opened the doors, I was struck by the very powerful feeling of shock and dismay. In fact, it was so strong a sensation that I was stopped in my tracks. My husband took my arm and walked me through the area. And other than an increased feeling of discomfort, everything looked normal. We listened to the tour guide describe the sightings experienced there. Laughter of children, an old woman in a 1930s bathing costume. The stories were compelling but I experienced nothing. That is, until our group was leaving. As we walked out of the area, I was gripped by the same powerful feeling that I had upon entering. I turned around to look behind me. The pool was filled with water, and there were almost two dozen people milling around, both in and out of the pool. I could very clearly see the figure of a young girl, perhaps 12 to 14 years of age, floating face down on the water. It was clear from the expression of terror on the faces looking on, that she had drowned. 
When I was finally able to call out to my husband, the vision had disappeared. I experienced nothing else on the rest of the tour. And another one from the Queen Mary. When I was little, my cousin was married near the Queen Mary. The reception was held on the Queen Mary. I, along with another kid, got bored at the reception. So we roamed around the halls of the ship. We went everywhere. At one point, there was two doors with a small opening between them. We could see inside. There was a swimming pool, but I don't think it really had any water in it. The lights were on, and it sounded like the room was full of people chanting. When I opened the doors, there was no one there. I stayed the night on the ship, but we didn't hear anything else other than the chanting. I don't think I even realized that the chanting was coming from ghosts, maybe, until I was much older and started reading about hauntings on the Queen Mary.